Welcome to Vango Notes for Human Resource Management, 11th edition by Gary Dessler. Chapter 4, Job Analysis. Section 1, Big Ideas. Has your supervisor ever asked you to take on a task at work and you thought to yourself, that's not in my job description? It's the punchline of many jokes, but do you think most people even know what the statement means? Do you? Just what is a job description? And where do they come from? Well, let's answer these questions by looking first at how to analyze a job. Organizations consist of jobs that have to be staffed. But to staff these jobs, managers need to know what the jobs entail and what kind of people the firm should hire for the job. And that's exactly the kind of information a job analysis provides. Specifically, Job analysis is the procedure through which you determine the duties of these positions and the characteristics of the people to hire for them. Either a supervisor or a human resources specialist will conduct it. The job analysis includes several types of information, including information about the job's actual work activities, such as cleaning, selling, teaching, or painting. The specialist may also collect information about human behaviors, like sensing, communicating, deciding, and writing. This part of the analysis includes job demands such as lifting heavy items or walking long distances. The employer may also want information about the job's performance standards, like quantity or quality levels for each job duty. Management will use these standards to appraise employees. The job analysis will also gather information about machines, tools, and equipment used in the job. Finally, the specialist will find out about the job's context. Included here is information about physical working conditions, work schedule, and the organizational and social context. For instance, we'll get information about the number of people with whom the employee would normally interact and whether the job is performed in an air-conditioned office or outside under trying weather conditions. So, job analysis provides all the facts about a job. And employers use job analysis information to support many human resource management activities. Let's look at some of these. Because it identifies the human characteristics required to perform the work, job analysis helps managers decide what sort of people to recruit and hire. It's also indispensable for estimating the value of each job and its appropriate compensation. Compensation, such as salary and bonus, usually depends on the job's required skills and education level, safety hazards, and degree of responsibility. These are all factors you can assess through job analysis. Managers may also use job analysis to determine job duties and performance standards. A performance appraisal compares each employee's actual performance with his or her performance standards. So, the information provided from job analysis is useful for many human resource management activities, and it even plays a big role in equal opportunity compliance by validating all major human resource activities. Now that you understand the purpose and importance of job analysis, you may be wondering how to conduct a job analysis. Well, there are six steps. Let's look at each of them. In step one, you must decide how you'll use the information, since this will determine the type of data you collect and how you collect them. Some data collection techniques are good for writing job descriptions and selecting employees for the job, while others don't provide any of this qualitative information. Next, the human resource specialist reviews any relevant background information, such as organizational charts, process charts, and existing job descriptions. Organization charts show the organization-wide division of work, how the job in question relates to other jobs, and where the job fits in the overall organization. A process chart provides a more detailed picture of the workflow. For example, a process flow chart for a quality control clerk would show that this job is expected to review components from suppliers check components going to the plant managers, and give these managers information about the component's quality. Finally, the existing job description, if there is one, usually provides a starting point for building the revised job description. In Step 3 of the job analysis process, the human resource specialist selects representative positions. 
For example, it's not usually necessary to analyze the jobs of 200 assembly line workers when a sample of 10 jobs will do. Next, in step 4, we do the actual analysis by collecting data on job activities, required employee behaviors, working conditions, and human traits and abilities needed to perform the job. In the fifth step, we verify the information we've collected by having the worker perform the job with his immediate supervisor. Finally, we use the information we collected and validated to develop a job description and job specification. These are the two tangible products of the job analysis. The job description is a written statement that describes the activities and responsibilities of the job, as well as its important features, such as working conditions and safety hazards. The job specification summarizes the personal qualities, traits, skills, and background required for getting the job done. In some firms, job analysis is still a time-consuming process. There are various ways to collect information. Interviews, questionnaires, observations, and work diaries are the most popular. They all provide realistic information about what job incumbents actually do. In practice, you could use any of them or combine several. The basic rule is to use those that best fit your purpose. For example, an interview might be appropriate for creating a listing of job duties and job description, but a more quantitative method, such as the position analysis questionnaire, may be best for quantifying each job's relative worth for compensation purposes. Some firms use a single approach, but research suggests that collecting information using only one method may lead to inaccurate conclusions. So it's best to use several sources. For example, where possible, collect job analysis data from several types of respondents, including groups of employees, individual employees, observers, supervisors, and analysts. Regardless of which method you use, the data you collect is very important to many human resource management activities. And if the job description portrays the duties of the position well enough, so they're clear to both employees and their supervisors, no employee should ever again have to say, that's not in my job description. That's the end of this section. Section 2. Practice Questions Okay, now that we've reviewed the chapter, let's see how much you've retained. I'll give you a series of multiple choice, true, false, and essay questions to think about. After a few seconds for each, I'll give you the correct answer and an explanation. Let's start with multiple choice. Ready? Question 1. Job analysis collects various types of information, including work activities, human behaviors, and A. Human requirements, or B. Workforce demographics. The answer is A. Human requirements. This includes job-related knowledge or skills, education or work experience, and personal attributes like aptitudes, personality, and interests. Question 2. The most popular methods for gathering job analysis data are interviews, questionnaires, diaries, and A. Specification, or B. Observations. The answer is B. Direct observation is especially useful when jobs consist mainly of observable physical activities, as with assembly line workers and accounting clerks. Question 3. Most job descriptions contain sections that cover job identification, responsibilities, working conditions, and A. Standards of performance, or B. Compensation amount. The answer is A, Standards of Performance. This section lists the standards the employee is expected to achieve under each of the job's description's main duties and responsibilities. Question 4. Several solutions were proposed in the mid-1900s to combat the dehumanizing of workers, including job enlargement, job enrichment, and A, job diversification, or B, job rotation. The answer is B. Job rotation means systematically moving workers from one job to another, say from bolting on the legs of a chair to attaching the back of the chair. Okay, let's try a few true-false questions. 
Question 5. Job specification based on a statistical analysis approach is more legally defensible than the judgmental approach. True or false? The answer is true. Statistical analysis is more defensible because equal rights legislation forbids using traits that you can't prove to distinguish between high and low job performers. For example, hiring standards that discriminate based on sex, race, religion, national origin, or age need to be shown to predict job performance. Question 6. Traditional, pyramid-shaped organizations with seven or more management layers put top managers in closer touch with customers. True or false? The answer is false. Flat organizations with just three or four levels bring top managers closer to customers. But managers each have more subordinates reporting to them and can directly supervise them less closely while subordinates' jobs have greater responsibility. Question 7. In competency-based job analysis, job descriptions are based on competencies rather than job duties. True or false? The answer is true. Competency-based job analysis emphasizes what the employee must be capable of doing, rather than a list of the duties she must perform. Question 8. It is critical to gather detailed information about all jobs in the organization. True or false? The answer is false. There may be too many similar jobs to analyze them all, so it's preferable to select representative positions or a sample of representative jobs. How are you doing so far? Ready for some short essay questions? Okay, here's the first of two. Question 9. What are the five basic job activities rated with the position analysis questionnaire? The five basic job activities rated with the position analysis questionnaire are decision-making, communication, social responsibilities, performance of skilled activities, physical activity, operation of vehicles or equipment, and information processing. Last one, question 10. What are the five steps of statistical job analysis? The five steps of statistical job analysis are to analyze the job and decide how to measure job performance, select personal traits that should predict successful performance, test candidates for these traits, measure these candidates' subsequent job performance, and statistically analyze the relationship between the human trait and job performance. That's the end of this section. Section 3, Key Terms Okay, now we'll review some of the chapter's key terms. I'll give you the term and pause a few seconds while you mentally define it, and then I'll come back and state the definition. Ready? Question 1. What is a job description? A job description is a list of a job's duties, responsibilities, reporting relationships, working conditions, and supervisory responsibilities. The job description is one of the products of a job analysis. Question 2. What is an organization chart? An organization chart is a chart that shows the organization-wide distribution of work, with titles of each position and interconnecting lines showing who reports and communicates to whom. Question 3. Define functional job analysis. Functional job analysis is a method for classifying jobs similar to the Department of Labor method but taking into account the extent to which instructions, reasoning, judgment, and mathematical and verbal ability are necessary for performing job tasks. Question 4. What is a process chart? A process chart is a workflow chart that shows the flow of inputs to and outputs from a particular job. Question 5. What is a job diary or log? 
A job diary or log is a daily listing made by workers of every activity in which they engage, along with the time each activity takes. Question six: Define job enlargement. Job enlargement is the process of assigning workers additional same-level activities. This increases the number of activities a worker performs. For example, an automobile assembly line job may be enlarged by assigning the tasks of installing the radio and other dashboard components. Question seven: What is de-jobbing? De-jobbing is broadening the responsibilities of the company's jobs and encouraging employees not to limit themselves to what's on their job descriptions. Question eight: What is a boundaryless organization? A boundaryless organization is one marked by the widespread use of teams and similar structural mechanisms that reduce and make more permeable the boundaries that typically separate departments. Question nine: Define competencies. Competencies are the demonstrable characteristics of a person that enable performance of a job. Job competencies are always observable and measurable behaviors. Last one. Question ten: What is performance management? Performance management bases your employees' training, appraisals, and rewards on encouraging and rewarding the skills and competencies they need to achieve their goals. That's the end of this section. Section four: Rapid review. Are you ready for the exam? Let's see. In this section, I'll give you a question and pause for just a few seconds before giving you the answer. Ready? Question one: What is job analysis? Job analysis is the procedure for determining the duties and skill requirements of a job and the kind of person who should be hired for it. Question two: What is the purpose of the standard occupational classification? The standard occupational classification classifies all workers into 23 major groups of jobs that are subdivided into minor groups of detailed occupations. Question three: Define job specifications. Job specifications are a list of a job's human requirements, such as the education, skills, and personality needed to perform successfully. Question four. What is the U.S. Department of Labor job analysis procedure? The U.S. Department of Labor job analysis procedure is a standardized method by which different jobs can be quantitatively rated, classified, and compared. Question five: Define job enrichment. Job enrichment is the process of redesigning jobs to increase the opportunities for the worker to experience feelings of responsibility, achievement, growth, and recognition. Question six: What are some of the human resource management activities that use job analysis information? Some of the human resource management activities that use job analysis information are recruitment, selection, compensation, training, performance appraisal, and equal opportunity compliance. Question seven: What is the position analysis questionnaire? The position analysis questionnaire is a very structured job analysis questionnaire. Of 194 items representing the basic elements that may play an important role in a job. Question eight: Define essential job functions. Essential job functions are the job duties that employees must be able to perform with or without reasonable accommodations. Question nine: What is reengineering? Reengineering is the process of redesigning a business process so that small, self-managing teams of employees get the task done together, all at once. Last one, question ten: Why is it preferable to describe jobs in terms of competencies rather than duties? 
It's preferable to describe jobs in terms of competencies because defining them in terms of duties may describe them too narrowly. Defining the job in terms of competencies is more strategic, and measuring competencies better supports the performance management process. Well done. That's the end of this section. This concludes the Vango notes for this chapter. We hope you found this audio review helpful. Be sure to check out other Vango notes for textbooks published by Pearson Education.